So for this evening, we'll have uh, Zoom for the uh, public hearing portion of the town plan. Um, so as we get going, there may be some questions that come in from Zoom, and it does. Um, Therese or I will field those questions and probably read them aloud so everybody can hear them, and then we can talk like normal. So, um, so we'll call the meeting to order, 6 o'clock. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I think being that, the only thing I was just going to suggest was being that we have the public hearing for the town plan first, is maybe we just move the public comment behind that. Because, um, you know, just in case there's a, most of the time public comment is not a lot, but, you know, no matter what tonight, it could be something and then take a while to get on. And, um, so if everybody's good with that, we just move the public comment behind the public hearing on the town plan. I move to accept the agenda as okay. I want a small question. It's a, just to fix it spelling. It's a liquor license for the old Lotus Creek. That's Locust Creek. Oh, sorry. Yep. Um, it, where does it say that? It's the next to the last bullet. Yeah. Oh, it's on the town manager's report, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's not no, on the. the oh, locus. Okay. No, it's oh, not general. Lotus? Come on. <laughs> not Lotus. Sorry. Right. Um, Paul had been slacking, so I think it's a lot of people are not waiting until the town manager report. That's before. right. I didn't Lotus. That's funny. I probably just got to type it away. I didn't think about it. Okay. <laughs> now I can go home. I move we accept the agenda as amended. Uh, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, uh, to start this evening, uh, we'll go over the public hearing for the draft town plan. So, as we know, uh, we go through the process every five years to adopt new town plans. <clears throat> this plan uh, is organized and drafted through the Planning Commission. Um, so uh, if, if you haven't seen it already, the, the draft is out there, it's online. It has been um, on the website. So it's been out there for some time. I, I do know, um, um, you know the plan, I know five years ago the plan uh, took a lot of time to get through it because we had the, at the same time we had the river corridor and, and new flood easement stuff activity came came down which you know took several meetings to get through all the new information that was coming from the state um, this plan um, i think you know once you've probably read through it um, the majority of the plan really hasn't changed much since the last one um, so did uh, Therese, did you want to I know, usually we have the planning commission here that uh, kind of presents the plan, okay. fields any questions that anybody may have, and then uh, I know we kind of go from there. But in this case, are you going through section by section? Is that what you mean? No, no. I'm not sure, but I think it might be just easier for if people have specific questions. I mean, it's hard for me to give you an overview because as you all know, I'm new to the game because of the your prior, um, sorry, your prior planning commission is no longer there. You know, we yeah. don't have anybody on. It's sad if I'm lost or right. left. But we are allowed <laughs> to ask questions. Of course, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, I can tell you that on September 16th, 2020, the Planning Commission did their public hearing on the town plan. Uh, if you weren't here, uh, Victoria Weber had sent a letter to the Planning Commission on August 23rd, and she had some nice comments. Some of it was just some editorial stuff or corrections, um, which was great. Um, Lenny Meek had added, uh, which we added, did add some language about a uh, statement that Bethel is a diverse community. Um, Owen had submitted, Owen Daniel McCarter had submitted a letter with some language he recommended be added in regards to social inclusion. And I believe we all kind of worked through that. We kind of really just ended up using it in a working session. And I think we tweaked the language a little bit and added all that. Uh, Tom Warhol 
recommended language regarding food insecurity, uh, the Bethel food shelf, and providing access to healthy, nutritious foods to Bethel residents. We added that. Uh, Laura Perez recommended language on making Bethel more accessible in housing, parking, and in the design of downtown. We did that. Um, she'd given us some wording later, which was very handy. Um, and we just had an overall discussion regarding volunteerism and participation in town committees. Uh, Jean Krause had recommended some language regarding geothermal energy, and Nicole Sear of the Energy Committee explained Dependence B and other energy goals. So we um, ended that night about, uh, let's see, at 7.43, we had the Planning Commission moved to accept the proposed changes, and we sent the select, you know, sent it on to the select board. So I actually thought it was a great meeting. Um, you know, I think that, you know, I'm sure, you know, that everybody there kind of, it was more of a collaboration, an effort to get some last minute ideas, to make some clarifications, um, um, and um, Victoria was great because there were some typos and some things that maybe didn't quite flow. So that was the overall, that's kind of a summation of the minutes and of the way the public hearing went for the Planning Commission. It went really well, and we added some um, more graphics and a couple things like that. So I think that, I mean, Laura can say, I mean, I think it was a fair, what we added was a representation of what happened that night, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to read it until later of uh, that meeting, and I just have one question. Uh, it's, it's concerning that when you do the public water. Um, what page is it on? It's on page 35. When you do the public water, it's just a question. <laughs> because um, it talks about the Geico tank, um, up the reservoir Geico tank. Um, but I was, my question is, it doesn't talk about uh, providing electricity or running electric, uh, electric lines through the recreation center to the Geico tank. Okay. And, I, and I didn't know um, what, you know, if that's, is that part of the town plan? Because um, you had mentioned that you were gonna that it was gonna happen. It is happening. Yep, yeah. Yeah. So I was on the phone today with the amount of power. So. So yeah. And it I, doesn't. Um, so I didn't know. Says. I don't know um, where that comes into the town plan. I think that would be just regular maintenance, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, actually it doesn't say that. Um, it talks about the tank, and it says right here, a scope. Mm, sorry. Apologize. A scope of work was developed and is slated to be implemented in the summer of 2021. Funding for this project is part of a $2.8 million package that the town received from the state's revolving loan fund. So I think it's all part of that. That yeah, would be part of that. Because obviously, yeah, to okay. break down okay. the, the parts of that $2.8 million would have been okay. too much information, I think. Yes, yeah. but um, because it says uh, there's something doesn't need any work, doesn't need any work or something. No, well, what they're talking about is uh, the tank itself. There was talk, oh, they were concerned at one point that the tank may be having some issues because of, um, you know, they've had any issues and they had talked about would we ever have to, would we have to replace it in the near future with a big, like, you know, glass line okay. tank or something. Okay. And that's what they meant was no, once the inspection was done, it answered a bunch of questions. Okay, so, so that, that part of this is within the, Yes, yep, yeah, and they're actually, yeah, they're, they're starting mm -hmm. soon to lay a conduit um, for that, and then GMP will be in at some point to hold primary power through there. So okay. it's, it's a go. Just wanted to, that's my question. <clears throat> Do we have any questions from the board uh, first in regards to the town plan? Yeah, I had a question on the page 28, <laughs> and, and, and some of these tracks. I just want to make sure we have the most current information on some of these charts. I know some of it is census related, but we don't have you know current information on. But for example, the enrollment for the year for school year 1819. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to get those numbers? Uh, I'll be honest. Um, the school has not been forthcoming with information, so I think that they probably used the most recent data that they could get to reverse when they did this, but mm -hmm. we've sent them a section repeatedly to have them look at it, and, and they didn't, so we did the best we could, so I'm sure that knowing uh, 
Sarah, she was the one working for Two Rivers. She was great, and um, yeah. I'm sure that's. I'm not sure. It's where also she, a state issue. Yeah, it could be. You don't get those numbers on until about two years after you're told. It says state. right here, yeah, source of my agency of education. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming we could. Mm -hmm. They would know, but I don't. They might. They might. I mean, I would, they should, but. I don't know. So anyways, I, I think that she probably got the most recent stuff she could, Paul. Okay, okay. okay. And actually, that's the last year that we had a left elementary and a junior senior high. Yeah. And next yep. year after that was a uh, middle school and an elementary, so we're going to have to break it down even differently. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions from the board? I can open it up to any public comment if anybody has any questions. Just, um, I mean, if, if there's not a lot of them, feel free to kind of just raise your hand briefly. And, uh, just, just make sure you state your name, that way Lisa can get it for the record. Um, if there's a lot of questions at the same time, maybe just keep your hand raised and I'll just call on you. So what's the next step for you once we clear it through tonight? Yep, so the next step would be um, probably at your next select board meeting, we would just put it on and you would accept it. If there's any changes made or you'd accept it at that point. And um, then you would be, Zero. then we have to get it printed and you've got to send it, to, you know, there's a process for us to do more paperwork on the side, but as far as you guys, it is effective immediately. As okay, soon as no waiting period. No, uh, no. As soon as you, file appeal, right? as soon as no, as soon as because Two Rivers has already helped with this. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing is that the planning commission and the DRB already have a meeting scheduled. I think it's the seventeenth, right? So we're going to start look working on the zoning bylaws because that's next. So mm -hmm. we'll be able to meet to, and that's what we'll do is we'll start working on those. Well, I know it's on the agenda for, well, I haven't seen the agenda yet, but it's expected to be on the Two Rivers agenda on December 9th, I think is the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, they had asked me what our schedule was so they yeah. could do that, and then, yeah, yeah so not, then. We're not, actually, we're not meeting in November, we're meeting yeah. early December and stuff. Yeah, so it doesn't hinder what we do. Um, yeah. So and they've been active in, the, in it since we use the municipal planning grant anyway, so they've been, you know, giving us information from the, the state because of course they're monitoring yeah. legislation and stuff. So so then the, then the PC will move on to the zoning bylaws and then that will take a, you know a few months for us to get through probably. Um, and then Two Rivers did agree to do a desk review of the zoning bylaws. I think I had to tell you that Rick. They, uh, they said they would do a desk review because I said look we don't know all the statutes like if something has changed or whatever so Two Rivers, Kevin Geiger said he'd do a desk review for us once we got our draft bylaws together. And he's like, well, I, you know, he said he couldn't do it immediately. I'm like, that's fine, neither can we, so. <laughs> so that's helpful. Yes, Laura. Hi, um, Laura Perez. And I just have a comment followed by a suggestion. And my comment is a thank you to you, Therese, for facilitating such a collaborative process on this. It was really nice to, to see oh, that thank happen. You. Yeah, it was helpful. Mm -hmm. I thought because I had just joined the planning commission because I had no choice. And so it was, <laughs> it was helpful to kind of get everybody's input. I felt like it was a really good process. And, you know, I don't know, it's kind of, it's a town document, so it's nice to have that kind of feedback. I actually felt really good after that meeting that we had really come together as a Yeah, I agree. And then um, my brief suggestion is on page 119. Um, in the in the
policies added at the bottom. My yeah. suggestion is just to remove the word handicap and leave it accessible, um, which is the, you know, just the more up-to-date way to express those. Um, so it should just say town to consider accessibility? Yep. Okay. Just and, All right. okay. and then in the second one, the same thing, just to, okay. um, regarding the proper number of accessible parking spaces. People can have food most of the time, but the way it's defined is if there's if there's at least once a month when you wonder where you or your children will get your next meal, then okay. that's how food insecurity is. Right. Well, that's that's good. Good. <laughs> it gives me the word that I can explain that to them because I said I don't know the exact answer, but I'm going to ask them to explain that to them. Yes, Lenny. Literally, I'm, I'm looking up what is food insecurity. Uh huh. And it says, <clears throat> most people can go to the grocery store and buy the food they need, but not everyone can get enough healthy food easily. This is called food insecurity, and it can look different for different people. Okay, well, that's perfect, but that, that covers it. So yeah. if I get that question again, I will be better yeah. the answer. So thank you, that's helpful. Uh -huh. I didn't want to misuse it or leave anyone out, so maybe somebody mm -hmm. one Any other questions? Quite a bunch. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, again, you know, what we went through five years ago with all the with all the changes at the state in regards to the corridor, you know, normally your town plan, you know, just kind of um, slightly modifies itself from, you know, every five years. And five years ago, it like drastically changed because of the corridor, because of the by bylaws, everything was all written one. Mm -hmm. So there were several hearings to get through all that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's, I mean, you know, Andrew Delaney, uh, he's, uh, Cecil Washburn, Peter Dorn, um, I don't remember who else, Andrew Stone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they did a good job and they brought in committees. The Rec Committee came in and Conservation Commission and a lot of people came in and helped. So it was 
this is not something that one commission does by themselves. It was definitely a collaboration. And I think uh, they brought in someone from the state of Vermont, right, to help with like tobacco and that sort right. of thing. And I, and I was there for the child care part because I yeah. work in child care. That's right, yeah. So there was a lot of people that came and helped, and so it was it was nice. It was really great that um, they had so many people. One night I came and there was a load of all the conservation commission, this, there was some people from the wreck. There was a whole group, so it was great. I mean, I just wonder, you know, what we could do better to to get better re representation from the, the school end of things, because I mean, the school, you know, is the you know the heartbeat of your community, and mm -hmm. and you know, didn't really feel like we had that yeah. representation at the school level. And I don't know if there's a you know you know should we offer up a seat on the planning? I mean, how how do we get them yeah. more involved into mm -hmm. our town? Um, yeah. The trouble is, there's so few of the uh, administration, teachers, and whatnot actually live in this town. Mm -hmm. If we had, if there was more people from Bethel working over there, it'd be a lot easier. But I mean, the, the, the uh, administration is out of town. I, th I think at one time it was like 90% of the teachers were out of town. So. I wonder how true that is. I mean, because I can. Off the top of my head, I can think of five or six faculty members and one admin person that are Bethel residents. You know, so may maybe it's just kind of going, like Chris said, like going back to them and saying, hey, can you put a representative from the school? And maybe, maybe, maybe it's only just come, come to a right. specific meeting. To and, and maybe it's not all the time. Maybe it's just right. when the plan, you know, so many months prior to the plan coming, you know, and that. It went out and we called and emailed and now we got you to go to the junior yeah. somebody so you went over to and you handled well, the other thing too we had this year yeah I went and hand delivered some information for them to fill out of course you know yeah. at that point we're in full fledged COVID and you know couldn't mm -hmm. just walk to the school and hand something in to you know make sure somebody was there you know getting them to do anything yeah like this and I think for <laughs> them to get together and share that information was harder but yeah. um, no it's I mean yeah I'm happy to put my mind on it and maybe see if I can get somebody to up to being a representative. You know, I mean, the other thing I was thinking of, I mean, we have, you know, we have, um, you know, three board members, right? So, you know, having one, maybe one of those board members could temporarily, you know, come to one of the meetings or come yeah, I mean, to the meeting. Yeah, the ways out now. Or sit on the least. planning commission for a small period of time, you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> we work on zoning rights next, which doesn't. No, much, but, no, but, but at least be willing to step up when we do the next time. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, get get ahead of it a little more than yeah. Because the information is a little different now. Now that you know, you don't have you know, you have your high school and world and your middle schools here, so the data isn't quite as easy as it was in the past. You know, three hundred kids here. You know, now they're in different directions. Well, and hopefully, then obviously we won't be going through COVID. Maybe we can also get them. I don't know how early on they were brought into the. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. we're always looking for volunteers, just in case <laughs> there is a place for you. If you're not sitting on one. There is a place for you. And, and, you know, this is kind of a good example <laughs> of someone, right, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is a good example of like you know may not necessarily have to be a committee member, but you know there are certain times where there might be a large project in a certain committee that's getting ready, like, you know, we went to the skate park, and, you know, for the rec committee and, you know, town planning. It may not have to be a full-time committee member, but maybe at certain times when there is those spikes in activity that, you know, a little more buy-in, or if we could maybe pull the right people, you know, like at the school or something like that, or, you know, like the skate park, and we started to see some involvement from, really skaters, right? I mean, right. they weren't just right. the people that were coming in for the rec committee, they were coming right. in for that specific yeah. portion of it. And, yeah. You know, that might be something that... Yeah, and do. we're seeing involvement because of the ice skating too. Yeah. Yeah. So, we have anybody else? Yes. I'm brand new on the planning commission. I'm 86 pages into it, so I have 50 pages left of the... <laughs> town plan to review but overall I think that most of it's worded pretty well um, little few little things that maybe could be changed at some point but nothing major that I've come across 
I'll be good too, because if when you get through the town plan, Wayne, and, and um, then that'll be helpful, you know, so because you'll have it under your belt. I'm sure the same thing with right. Zoe and Kyle. Once you get the town plan right, it'll roll nicely in for us doing zoning bylaws. Yeah. And then I get the bylaws that I haven't read yet either. I, mm -hmm. I got time to do that now. I'm yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it'll be good. I mean, I think we'll kind of organize the 17th, figure out how we're going we're gonna to do it. And, and it's helpful too because the DRB has been an existing solid board of members. So they are the ones who have questions with the permits. Um, Kelly and I have been doing zoning. So we have, you know, we've all kind of made notes on our copy of the zoning bylaws to say, what's up with this? Why this doesn't match this? So there also is going to be a little bit of that. Right. So it'll be nice. I'm excited to have you and, and uh, Zoe and Kyle and Jean have some fresh eyes looking at things. I think it'll be great. Yeah. And it takes a little bit of time. Anytime you're new to a, a select board or a committee, it takes some time to like, feel out that committee. Of, in this case, you know, reading the town plan, right? Right. I mean, it takes a full to go through the town plan. You know, it's no different than anything else. It takes some time to understand some of the bylaws. I kind of look to the senior members of the committee or the board and yeah. try to learn from there yeah. where the experience is. Yep. So I get the gist of it. Yeah, that'll be good. It'll be good. We're all kind of in the same spot, so I can wait. It's, it's, it's bad and good. Hopefully, we'll figure it out. I, I have no doubt we will we will get through it and have a great planning commission. But there's still plenty of seats available for the planning commission. So, um, and then they can tell your friends. <laughs> okay. Any other questions in regards to the town plan? Did the DRB have any, do you guys have any comments or about the town plan or anything, no? No, 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 at this point. I figured you would have hollered by now, but I wasn't sure. Any, any comments on the Zoom chat? I don't see any. But this will probably be last call for any, um, any comments. So like Teresa said, the next step in the process will be at the next select board meeting, we'll put this out on an agenda item to adopt. Um, and then just as soon as we adopt it, it becomes um, the new plan, so. What did you call it? When you adopt this plan, how flex what kind of flexibility do you have to make the necessary changes if need be as time goes by? I don't think you have any flexibility. I think that if you decide for some reason you need a rewrite, you have to, you can start, maybe you can start the process earlier. I know you have to have one for nearly every five years. Mm -hmm. I don't think that anyone, I don't know, maybe you correct maybe not. If you did it in year three, I don't think anyone's going to yell at you. But I don't, during the process, you have no flexibility because zoning regulations are based mm -hmm. on it. So um, there's no flexibility to change it until mm -hmm. then, and, and, which is common. So everybody right. wants to operate on the same. Mm -hmm. We all have account plan good for five years. Okay. So. But I, I'm assuming you could do it before five years if you. I think you have to do it for five years. Yeah, no, I'm saying, yeah, right. that's what I was saying. But right. if you had to do it three and for some reason you need right. to do it later, I don't think anyone's going right. to do that. The uh, bylaws can be amended in right. between, but I don't think there's any provision for the town plan. I've never heard of it being done. Let's say, I have to look, I don't think so, I've never heard of it. But. Mm -hmm. and, and you wouldn't want to, because it's such an undertaking to write it. <laughs> I don't think yeah. you will. No, I was thinking, you know, I'm thinking of a city that is no, that really isn't effective. <laughs> and Need and something needs to be reworked in there, not completely thrown away, but reworked in there to make that change possible for what you're trying to do at that time, because yeah. things just come up right. and things change. What well, kind of flexibility <laughs> is there for that? It's kind of good and bad about that because the fact that you can't do it sometimes is a good thing because if you have, I've seen zoning mm -hmm. changes in places that they don't have anything to do with it what the town plan said about gravel extraction mm -hmm. versus what their permit said. So the, the town plan you had, you couldn't change it because you would have been affecting ongoing cases too. So I would assume there's something to be said for in that process. So um, 
but you certainly, if you were going to do anything to it, would have to go through the whole open public hearing and the whole nine yards. But I can look and look into it, find out if you'd like to know. same process oh, yeah. again where you'd have a public comment yeah. um, piece and then it would go before the select board to be a, yep. adopted or not. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Any last comments? Oops, Kyle oh. has one. Wait, hang on, we have to unmute you. Oh, there you Yes. Yeah, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for joining the Planning Commission. <laughs> Happy to be here. We're excited to have you and your wife. It'll be great. Yeah, likewise. Thanks. Okay. We're not hearing any other questions, we will end the public hearing session for the town plan. Um, I'm sure, and again, even after this evening, if there was some sort of information that you'd like to see or something that came up, you can always reach out, you know, yeah, to sure. Therese or any of the board members mm -hmm. to, um, you know, it doesn't become final until we vote on it. Mm -hmm. On page five, there's a paragraph that talks about planning commission to periodically review and update the plan to reflect new conditions and needs. I, I always thought, I took that to mean the five year. But well, that was what I considered. It says the plan is effective for a period of eight years from the date of adoption or amendment unless readopted. Under general purpose and intent. Yeah.
conclude the public hearing for the town plan. And we'll also at the same time that will conclude the Zoom portion of the meeting. Thank you. And now, now we'll just move right into uh, we'll move into public comment or inquiry. So if there's anything that wasn't on the um, the agenda for the select board meeting for this evening that you'd like to bring up, now would be the time to do so. So yes, Lenny. I don't have the agenda. Is no, I'm sorry. I, I, there wasn't copies in the bag. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately we didn't get any print this evening. We have, um, the uh, we'll have Alex, um, he's first on the agenda to go over the um, class four uh, road use for the uh, personal deals. And then um, we have a discussion in regards to um, Avon Drive, an um, appointment um, for the Equity and Inclusion Committee. We have a uh, a liquor and tobacco uh, license for review, and then going, we're going over two more general fund budget pieces tonight. I know the last thing you had been a little bit earlier, you had been out to get here. There was a request from the school that, yeah. we, that we do the plowing, and right, yep. what happened with that? Because I wasn't here. What was the decision? Said no. The town said, the select board said, no, we're not going to plow this. Okay. They were they were trying to save money, obviously. So um, it was I think they were accepting a bid for fifty eight thousand to to do the schools and okay. we just said look we're down people we can't take it over and that's okay. all that. So we said no. Okay. Um, but I told the gentleman I thought that's what the board would say. So um, that would be successful. Thank you. And then next, hopefully next time we'll do uh, fire and uh, um, highway. Sorry, and then we'll bring it all together. So kind of just doing a little piece, it's just a little overview of it, and then once we put it all in one, then every, that's when the big, bigger budget meetings will happen. So of course, the public works is the biggest budget, so and we it tried takes a little longer. <laughs> we tried to keep the uh, the agenda light this evening, being that the hearing was going to be first, and you just never know with you know. Hearings like that, it could take hours and it could take, mm -hmm. you know, half an hour. It's not. <laughs> the last one took, um, I think, three meetings before we made it through all that. Wow. I remember right back then. So, mm -hmm. does that right, Michael? The state came, everybody came to testify. Mm -hmm. and we <laughs> it was, yeah. It was a lot there, of yes. Yeah. There was a lot of charts and computers. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a table that showed the erosion of oh, material. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, uh, any further public comment? If not, hearing none, we will turn it over to Alex. He's got, um, once a year he comes to get permission to operate on fourth class roads, so. Class four roads and road crossings and the same ones we've been using for years. You guys have a map of them? Yeah. Not sure if it's at the town office or at the the uh, highway department office. But. We have a big town office. Okay. I saw it. Um, I was going to go something else. I was like, hey, look what's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to be talking about Dusty in the corner somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, basically that's it. Just the White River Valley Ramblers looking for your the blessing on um, using course. sections of class four. Yeah, Alex is quite a bit So, question for you. So, Hooper Hollow Road, yeah, at the top, and where we put in that new culvert there a couple of years ago. So, so just as you come into the dip yep. of Hooper, there's and I believe the, um, Snowmobile uses the access. There's a there's on the property. Yeah, yeah, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Right. Maybe you can help us with this. There's a lot of storm water. Well, not a lot, but there's a fair amount of storm water on large events that comes down that trail. Mm -hmm. And it spills right out into Hooper Hollow. Okay. And Teresa and I were looking at it, I don't know, a month ago, maybe longer than that. But um, 
you know, about maybe, you know, talking to the landowner about installing some, maybe some water bars or is something that's... Is it summertime or is it wintertime? It, I think... It's spring I think, and summer. I think most of it really is um, any type of large storm event. Um, but I think you probably get some thaw. Um, mm -hmm. But you'll, if you go down there, you, know, you probably even see it now. You'll yeah. see debris that has washed or does wash continuously into the road yeah. um, there. And it, we did have one or two residents, well, there's only, I think, three residents on the whole road, but, you know, 66% of them had said yeah. that, <laughs> you well, know, that they were a little worried about it because that's one of the first spots, you know, you know, it's probably the iciest spot where you come down in the yeah. time and there was. And I don't think they use it. Even if you look at the road like now, if you were to walk up there now, you it's just, it's not a ground. It's, it's, it's not a ground. It's gravel and sand all over that. Yeah, stretch. it's a mess it's, right there. It's like 200 feet of pavement and then, and then it turns to dirt right now. Yeah, after. because as soon as you go up there, it's just, and all that, you can see it, it's come over your sign and it comes down over the bank and it's just kind of a mess. We don't have any pull there. I'll probably look at that. I know the ATV club uses that. All summer long, oh, too. Okay. You can look at Ed. Ed. Is that Ken? That would be Ken, I believe. Yeah, Ken. 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 Because it's, I mean, it's, it's land, so I think it's technically a town right of way. Yeah. Is it? We can put that on our next class four road agenda. Mm -hmm. if we, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, if, 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 <laughs> if, 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 oh, that's because I think, Mo, you were, aren't you looking at? You were Alan, I mean, it was a, it was a curve yeah. cut. There's a few of them yeah. that come yeah. in through there. Yeah. On the Hoover yeah. Hall. It'd be nice if maybe you just take a look at it and see what if we can do with that. Yeah. Um, just to keep the the water off or the debris off of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as just yeah, putting a little water mark cut in there, we shouldn't be too much of a problem. But, no. I don't think so. um, you know, like I said, I think that is. I think it is a class four road through there too. Is it? Yeah. That makes sense for the layout. So. Um, so do they usually, do the ATV clubs run the same, pretty much the same areas as you guys? They run a lot of the same. There's a few sections where they run different. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what their, you know, they, they run, they run Dark Hill a little bit. They run, but that, that section right there, I know they come right out right there. Okay. Right the side of Hooper Hall across the top of the mountain come down and then they run out Charlie Wilson Road yeah. out of ways and then go out and around the beaver ponds where we don't we don't run that part of the, yeah. the road in the winter. We have a bridge down the bottom of the stones okay. field there. So all right, I'll send the email you I know we're we're out starting to put signs up and stuff like that right now too, so we okay. can, it's easy to get up there and have a look at it.
Uh, next on the agenda is an appointment to the Equity and Inclusion Committee. How many how many members do you currently have now? We have, we have six. six. This will be seven. Seven. Okay. So this will make it their seventh member. And then we have one more, a young young lady, and she's way she's. We've been trying to encourage people to come to the meetings, um, come to a meeting for, well, in your case, it's different because we're trying to form a committee, but I think like she's going to come to a meeting on the 19th and then maybe get a taste for us, see if she wants to join or not. So, might I have one more? Is that something Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so she's going to come then. And uh, you can see on the letter, I think, the email, Rita is also interested in the Planning Commission, so we've asked her to come to the meeting on the 17th and uh, see how she likes it up close. Okay. So we just need a motion to appoint Rita Champion to the Equity and Inclusion Committee. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Yeah. And then, we have a liquor and tobacco license application. So this is the um, Locust. Still Locust Creek um, <laughs> building where where they have the, uh, the, the pizza. Yeah. Rolling those pizza. They have a trailer there. Mm -hmm. right yeah. Yep. Is there any pizza in the building? I don't know. I don't know. What's that? She's putting in a convenience store. I'm not sure if they have divided it up or what. Well, I was in there working on the furnace. Last Thursday, and it's full of antiques. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know if it's Tim and Tim out again. Yep. I'm in the garage, and I can't wait to bring you to the garage. Yeah, it just says. Yeah, or she, or she planned it well, Did she plan on doing anything out of that? that? It just says that she's planning on. Is she just using the? Is she just using the address for the trailer location? I don't think so, because it says it's a small convenience store to include beer, wine, cigarettes, and related items, as well as some snacks. Well, it sounds like she's going to be... And they're calling it the bus shop. Yeah, she must have signed the... I mean, she has, yeah, she has put Tim and Kim in here. Yeah, she, she did, yeah. Yeah, she was bringing it from uh, Tim. Yeah. Right so it's right here, yeah. I don't know, must be there. Maybe they're cleaning it out. I don't know what to tell you. It says if leased, so she's obviously leasing. Yep, this is yes, I'm leasing, so. Yes. Uh, what I was uh, see for her, or that I talked about her last, last time, she said she was renting the left side of this building and putting some uh, convenience store in there with Vermont products and stuff like that, so. Oh, so this is the second class in a tobacco yep. license. So I would just need a motion to approve. So
I got yeah. there. I got there for it. So. Yeah. And we have the general fund budget discussion, which we have the two pieces that Teresa has given us, which is which is the rec department and the listers. So me and Ellie's here so, now. So, um, so can we, I I didn't know it was going to be on the agenda tonight. So will we be able to have another discussion? Another this is time? just. Yeah, yeah, Ellie. We, I mean, we're, this is just starting the process of the budget. So normally, okay. you know, it's okay. you know making small adjustments from last year's budget. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, starting to think about like on yours. You know, probably the one thing that does change from year to year and more is this, you know what that uh, the improvement fund right. piece would look like. Right. Which which it might be a good time here in the next meeting or two to uh -huh. maybe have the rec committee come and kind of give us a mm -hmm. uh, an update okay. of kind of where where we're at in regards to okay. the plan and yeah, what's the okay. next segments and what's our timeline on that so we can start figuring out you know okay. how much money do we need to appropriate yeah. to do those next and pieces. i did i did um get an email from Therese asking me about the improvement fund and i did answer her okay and yeah, five thousand. Yeah, ten yeah. Well, and, Chris and, is talking about as a timeline, right. so we can start. Yeah, we have sure. Some pool repairs sure. that are going to be sure. sizable, so yeah. we're going to need and, to fit in a schedule for right. you know the next phase of the skate park, you know, trails and right. Some possibly and and we do have repairs. a meeting. We ha do have a meeting this Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Great. yeah, it'll be nice to kind of see. Yeah. What okay. what those projects are, what the timeline okay. on those, whatever it's over the next. Yeah. Three, four years, and then how much, you know, how much do we have in your account now? How much do we need to appropriate? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and the rest of the budget is pretty. I mean, a lot of it, you guys just you can't, you can't touch anyways because right. it's all like workers' comp, insurance, electricity, right. telephone, right. and right. some of that's pretty standard repairs and maintenance. We have some plans about what we could be doing in there, and and it looks like too we might have an issue at the building itself. Was the um, sewer pipe snapped off? Oh really? So, yeah. So yeah, that's I gonna deal with that. Heard, and she I heard that. got Vermont concrete in there, so they're gonna talk about fixing our water problem in there. Um, um, and then we got so let's see, it got stained, but we need to get the pavilion stained. So that's next year, so that's another part. And okay. um, yeah. what else? There's something else I'm missing. Cause but because you, you did you did power wash this side. Yep, yep, they cleaned it and we had to be, we didn't power wash it. They oh. were making recommendation not to because it was cedar. So oh, okay. we did clean it first. Okay, they cleaned it. Yeah, yeah yep. And, okay. um, but that was good. Those things that came out. Right. Well, and, so we also right. got some information on the plumbing um, okay. portions of trying to get those kind of, right. you know, like the water, so no one's falling down and everything. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So mm -hmm. well, I'm sure Deidre will update you that. She can tell you guys yeah, about yeah, she was busy today, so. Yeah, she's busy today. Yeah, she's busy. Getting closer to tax time, so. Yeah, yeah. Crazier. Okay. And, and again, the overall objective is, you know, try to keep that nice bell curve on, you know, on funding, because we don't want right. to say appropriate a five thousand mm -hmm. dollars for this budget, and then the next one you ask for forty, and you know, right? It, it, if Forty thousand is what we need to maybe appropriate twenty this year and twenty next year, so we keep that nice bell mm -hmm. curve and you know mm -hmm. trying to get out of the zigs mm -hmm. and zags of, of budgeting. So, right. so it'd be kind of it'd be nice to know what the total amount that you're going to be looking at for those projects, right. divided by whatever four years, yeah. five years. Yeah. Then right. we can say okay, that's what we need to appropriate, and, yeah. and then we'll look at once we get the full budget together. You know, do we have extra money? Do we not? You know, where do we stand? Yeah. Do we, you know, yeah. kind of like we've done in years past. So right, because we are working on certain things like the trail. You know, that just the trail grant yeah. is coming up this winter. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a big one, and, and yeah. I think there's more opportunity for them to bring right. you know more trails. Right. And I know you've got. So stuff. we have things like that. Yeah. That exactly. we have. We were that we're working on that we we need to discuss and stuff yeah i think the trails are, are good i think that could bring people to that yeah. mall 
yeah. you know, the trails, the skate park, right. and then the second piece of the skate park that you want to add. I think those are draws in this, especially right. the trails right. that you can connect from behind right. the school, up above, right. and then parking at the school and in the rec area. It seems right. to kind of tie that together. I think it could be a nice, right. I think that recreation is going to be the good way for some economic development in Bethel. Is yeah, that's that right. way. So it's, yeah. And and the Washburns put up the rink, yeah, you know, the, yeah. the the form of the <clears throat> rink the other day, and that's nice. So we just have to pray for good winter weather. <laughs> winter winter weather. We want we want cold winter weather. I know. Right now it's nice though. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Anybody have any comments? Have any projections or sense since we didn't really use the rest facilities in the same way that we have budgeted for them? What that difference might be as we go through the year, and, and if there are ways to sort of reconfigure how we use this year, but also like I know there are issues like if we don't use money that's in the budget, we can just roll it over into next year. No, are there are ways that we can kind of get ahead of. Yeah. Well, the good news is if we don't use it, thanks, Alex, is it's going to come into our undesigning fund balance. So we could actually run the HEP surplus, which we have not seen here since I've been here. So that would be nice to have that. The other thing is, too, we are uh, Dietrich met with Vermont Concrete Cutting, so that they're the ones who are going to have to kind of grind the floor. And I think Paul took a look at it today, too, about um, the shower. That's why we're having that water issue. Um, so getting that repaired out of budget, if the flooring is coming out in the spring, we stained it this year out of there, and as well as you know, fixing the um, the sewer pipe. So we're trying to do some of that. So you use some of that budget. Yeah. This to, year to do by, some by the maintenance. End of June. Yeah, by the end of June to get the maintenance done, and then um, Dietrich and I did have a conversation on last Wednesday, I guess, about um, opening the pool. You know, next year, obviously, um, that's a huge goal. This year, it was too many unknowns how we were going to deal with everything at once. So focusing on that, and I did revise the um, and drop to the revenues for the rec because even depending on COVID, depending on if there's a um, vaccine, how it's going to go, and maybe trying to do just the older children for swimming lessons and not the younger because you can't be close to them right now and we don't know what COVID's going to look like, so I'd rather underestimate in revenue than overestimate. So we just still, it's still a, you know, time and it's hard because we were talking about it and, and working it through and she's like, you know, you, you forget that you're budgeting 18 months out. So it's kind of a, you know, you're just trying to do your best situation. So we try to kick around some options and, um, I just said, well, send her back basically to the drawing board and said, go back and reread all the, um, agency of commerce and community development what they what were the what do we currently have in place for restrictions for pools and and see what we you know what it entails so hopefully obviously by then we hope that the vaccine and, and that you know and it could change and become more open then great so be it but we've got to kind of make a plan and because the other towns did wind up opening the pool in July. Yeah, a couple of them did, yeah. I mean, I, I still think we made the right choice. Oh, but, I think so, too. But, boy, I what think a... So too. Yeah, so, and that was the other thing, you know, we talked about is maybe calling them and saying, calling a couple of them and saying, hey, what worked for you? Yeah. What didn't work for you? What would you do, to, you know, if you're doing it again next year, what would you do different so we can kind of learn from somebody else's mistakes? Mm -hmm. right. Nothing I hate more than being the guinea pig. Somebody right. else had worked it out right. and see what they right. did. So, yeah, yeah. so it's, um, but certainly, um, you know, people really missed it, and it was hot summer, and yeah. so, trying to, fingers crossed, we can yeah. do it. Yeah. So that's what we use some of the money for, is that, and then obviously there'll be a, you know, probably be a savings in there, but the flooring will go in, and, and um, we still need to look at the pool itself, that's part of the master plan, is going to have to be the piping around the pool, it needs, you know, it's pretty shallow, that needs to be redone, and the concrete needs to be, some of that needs to come out and be redone, so the black cups, so the way that it adheres, or kind of the lip of that comes where the fiberglass is, that's going to be a big project, so that's something they'll have to go on the capital plan. Yeah, that, that would be an addition to the master plan, because we didn't foresee that. Right, exactly. It wasn't foreseen in the original master plan. Exactly, so we would just add, so we would just make a capital plan, we'll take the master plan and those things and put them in one 
you know, capital plan for the, you know, and figure out what we have to do. And then we'll prioritize it. And, and it's kind of just, a, you know, you could change it, priorities change. So but it gives you an idea, like Chris said, then maybe you do keep the 10 grand and just kind of keep going along. And then mm -hmm. when you have a big hit, you, you have the money to fund it, and then you can, you know, um, keep so, going. In. So are you suggesting we keep the 10 grand in the improvement fund or not get to 5,000? Maybe. I mean, I'll, I'll leave it at, it's at 10 right now. I haven't known okay. for five, but we'll see. We also okay. have to increase what we're going to set aside possibly for the reappraisal. So fund. So, you know how it goes. We'll keep that. Okay. But we've left yours is in there at 10. I made a note five question mark, but okay. we'll see how it goes. And um, but that's what Chris is saying is putting together all those things that we foresee and putting a price tag on them. I'll mm -hmm. be able to put them in a spreadsheet for you and say, okay, here's our capital plan. So. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you still juggle those things out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, appreciate, well, yeah. I appreciate when you give me a worksheet. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so I, I could use an updated worksheet. Yeah, that's helpful for that mm -hmm. one, especially too. We can kind of know what's in now. Yeah, so, yeah. but yeah, so we'll, we'll see. And then, yeah. um, how it works. About, fingers crossed. Yeah. We'll, okay. We'll, yeah, worst case scenario, we had some savings and we see a surplus. And then, yeah. mm -hmm. that's kind of nice because then if you have some underneath <coughs> fund balance, for some reason you have a big hit, like a, you know, whatever, big expense. Because you, know, also you still, because you, also that money is going to the swing set root um, um, chain. Yep, yeah, yep. That's put the swing set in, and yep, yep, exactly, that's right, yep. yep. So we had that yep. matching for the grant, yeah. which she did get. Yeah, she So did. we did get the grant for the swing set, so there yeah. was some of that money that yeah. was used for the match, so. Yeah. Um, and you still have, you know, your normal startup costs, yeah. you know, in June, that, yeah. uh, that will hit yeah. that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's just some front running costs on getting, yep. getting the pool and open. And like this year's budget. Yeah. Yeah. So, any other comments on recreation for now? <clears throat> okay, and blisters. Mm -hmm. Looks like for right now we're pretty much... Yeah. Same as last, uh, last yeah. budget. Yeah, Judy and Louise filled yeah. her so, which is great. I had a question about the assessor services. Yeah. Should we sit down with the separate fund and accumulate, either accumulate that and... Well, I don't know. I mean, we're kind of... Uh, I would say not, just because we're you're already saving for your reappraisal. And this is basically to pay someone in lieu of listers because Louise is, you know, July 1st, was, Louise would like to be done July 1st. Mm -hmm. So, um, God bless her, you know, she's been there a long time. And right now we have a lister who's never taken the oath. So really the only listers right now are Louise and Judy. Um, so I spoke to them last week and, and uh, Louise and Judy were going to kind of put something together, like basically what does it mean to be a lister and then so kelly and and so we can get this kelly and i and get out we put something in the paper on front porch forum on facebook on the website and try to find someone who's interested i mean as judy will tell you it takes a skill set and she needs somebody else who would want to learn the computer and um there's certain backgrounds that are really helpful with that and um we did talk about still trying to find an assessor whether it's um a realtor or a you know, something, but trying to, I told her if they got it together, I'd also send it to all the realtor offices and see what we can find. Um, Cause they need, they need another, they need another active sister. Someone, you know, like Judy, like Louise, who comes to work on a. But if we don't use that pen, it's in there. It just sits there. Just, yeah, it goes, goes, goes back to the end of the Yeah. Then I actually have to find out, like, the auditors are coming back on Wednesday, so I'm gonna ask Rick about the legal. I've never known anybody to put their legal fees into a capital fund. I like the idea, but I just need to ask them about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, so this is just something that we, we kind of just weren't sure, and it didn't play out this year. Louise decided to stay, but it sounds like July 1, she really wants to be done. So, hopefully, so if anyone wants to be a lister. Doug, what do you think? <laughs> Get some extra time on your hands. Oh, are you doing too much of a discount? <laughs> Takes is a motion and a second. Uh, right. <laughs> and uh, some glasses and yeah. right. mm, <clears throat> so. And Judy has an insurance background, which is helpful. So, you know, there's certain backgrounds that are really helpful, I think. Mm -hmm. But the other one is just to be showing up and learn. Right? Yeah. Yeah.
Well, I think a lot of it is, you know, if you get the right person that's willing to learn, you can uh, teach, teach them anything. Okay, any other discussion in regards to those two pieces for this evening? Okay. And Derek? Yes, sir. Okay. So we just, um, we didn't know what time, we want to make sure that we uh, were available for you so we could kind of shuffle through. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. No other things, so. Uh, is Sally coming as well, or? No. Okay. She walked me over here and then said, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I turned around and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She said, I'm here. Yeah. So Derek had some concerns in regards to the Avon Drive uh, piece, and we had... Right, right. This is in response. Uh, Sally did write a letter, and I did sign it. And so I wanted to um, speak how we feel about the, the uh, mostly the boundary on Avon Drive. Um, I don't want to put Therese on the spot, but she said she had found a, um, you know, this is, first of all, I think they did a nice job and we love the drainage. Oh, good. And uh, I'll take care of that as if it was my own. Yeah, thank you. I saw you yeah. out there that day. Which leads me. You had some young yeah. man there. I think it'll help the town. Good. Um, keep a lot of the dirt out of the, and dust out yeah. of, the, out of the, the stores. Good. And, uh. Um, Sally was concerned how it was being reconstructed and, and when it's paving is a good time to start over because uh, we have what started my interest was we have photographs with points that are still there like the uh, there's a stone in front of 29 Avon which is the Richardson's and that stone is still there and there's a photograph of Avon Drive and you'd mentioned you had found a uh, a 1922 fire insurance map? Yeah, that's when I sent her yep. the letter. Yeah, I haven't seen that, but I think I found, as far as the layout, something that, also when I, I met. I put it in the copy of the letter that I sent. Okay, yeah. Also when I met you, the utility director was there, Mr. Mills. Yeah. And yep. Um, I complimented him also on the, the drainage. And uh, he mentioned it was a good idea to have a survey. Okay. And you mentioned that my survey wasn't recorded. Right, I understand. Yeah, and I agree with you. Mm -hmm. But we have a recorded survey right here of Avon Drive. Right, that's the one that we have. Yeah, the town has that one too. Yeah, that's right. Where I got it. The layout of the road, right? Yeah. Right, from 18 something? Well, it's laid out by the selectmen. I can read a little bit of it if I have time. Yep. Uh, we, the selectmen, meet and examine the premises as set forth in the above petition and laid a, a, uh, a road from the highway running throughout the village, past the depot house, uh, by the house of Gardner Wheeler, to the land where this Mr. Spaulding was going to build his house. And then... Um, it's, it's right here in English, measured from the center of the survey, 10 feet each side. Yep. So, and then there's a, an accurate survey. So if somebody were interested or in the future, this would be strong evidence of where the center line of Avon Drive is. Mm -hmm. And from that 10 foot offset, or actually from the center line would be my property line. because it says it runs by Gardner Wheeler's house. Now we're formally Gardner Wheeler. That belongs to uh, myself. Okay. So I wanted to, to make that clear. And then um, any questions on that? Book three, page 405, I believe. Yep, and the Bethel town line. Yep. Just, just like we're seeing it. The town turn is the accent. So any questions on that as a legitimate Survey of A1 Drive? No, I mean, that's where they laid out the road. I mean, yep. it doesn't. So I that would be my property system. line, and, and it could be resurveyed to see, you know, where the, the property line is. Or the, or the edge of the easement also, and to see where 
uh, the ownership of that nice drainage system lies. So I just wanted to bring up, that's my first point. So if there's any questions, I'll move on to the second. Is uh, there was a survey done on the top end of Avon Drive by Mr. Stein, and that is recorded by the town. And Mr. Stein is a licensed surveyor from Springfield, Vermont. Whose house did he do? He, uh, um, in effect, his unsigned survey was used to change the tax map of Bethel and deny me of the driveway I used for many years, along with others. So the, um, is that unsigned survey on file with the town? He, he finally did sign it. <clears throat> now what's it, but the tax map was changed before he signed it. And what's interesting is after he signed it, he was investigated by the state of Vermont for his misconduct. And um, it will be public knowledge, he'll have a, a say as to, as to whether he keeps his license or not in the future, and we're, it'll become public record. But my point is that based on this, and I don't know when it'll be, it might be a year from now, but based on the result of that hearing by the state, I would ask that that survey, even though it's been recorded, be rescinded as of any value for surveying my, my property. And at that point, the tax map being changed back to when I bought this property. Yeah, I think that's more of the a same civil, configuration. That's more of a civil matter. If you, if you have a survey, No, because this deals with me and the town. Well, but is it, is it your, is it, it's not your survey, I take it. It's a, it's an abutting property owner. Does their survey and your well, survey? It takes, it, basically it, it um, was done by uh, an abutter, yes. Yeah. So does, and you've had your property survey? Yes, I did. So does your survey and their survey agree or clash? They clash. So then the remedy for that would be the, um, the two survey, basically, usually what I've seen in the past is the two surveyors meet and kind of mediate and say, okay, this is where I got my historic stuff, theirs, and, and, and there's usually a corrected. But I'm just asking that the, the something the town change, they change the tax map based on this survey and if based on the outcome of this uh, Mr. Stein's work. If his work is found that he was not with the standards of his profession, that that, you can still have it on file, but it not be used against me. And that the task map be changed back to its original, original configuration when I, as see, I purchased the land, and based on this survey, overnight, I bought this land and paid for it and got a warranty deed for it, and then overnight, suddenly, oh, guess what? you no longer own your driveway. Right. And here's, here's proof. The sheriff came out and said, look, see, here's the tax map. You yeah. don't own that. Right. I think if, you, oh. sir, if your survey was filed, then somehow the listeners are going to have to kind of look at it inside. But just because the state says his work, maybe he's... Well, he may lose his license over it. Now it'll be right. Now, yeah. just because he loses his license then doesn't automatically make every work he's ever done. In well, the this investigation is based only on his work okay. on Avon Drive. Then I would imagine that as part of that so, research, it would, I would assume that... You don't have to answer me tonight. I'm just no, throwing this out. I'm assuming the Attorney General, whoever does that sort of thing, would yeah. let the town yeah. know if we're supposed to rescind that. Okay, so, fair enough. I, I so will. if the state tells you to rescind it, you probably will. We have, um, we have a choice. <laughs> well, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think we have that. And that's about all I have. I mean, um, it's a it's nice uh, uh, piece of property that I bought. And yeah. I, I expect, I expect to, to enjoy, you know, right to, it matters to Sally yeah. every inch. Yeah. And you can see too, I mean, we did take, obviously, with this project, we didn't change the layout of what was there. We made sure that, you know. With no, but the property lines do go back to the original. Yeah, I mean. Line. There's no reason they would have changed over the years. 
I'm just saying that the project paving that we just did now in the stormwater, we didn't get any closer to anybody's property and we stayed within the parameters of the, the what was there, I mean, mm -hmm. or has been there. So, and I'm hoping that the paving, you got a whole street with it, so I'm hoping you're happy with it. Yeah, and I, and I compliment the contractor. What was it, GW Tatro? Yeah. I think they worked very hard and were, were uh, very delightful to have his guests up there. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. nice. So maybe you'll hear more from me in the future. Okay. Yep. Yeah, if that gets settled, then that's part of the action that the, somebody, whoever that is at the state level. Right, because it, it's odd that I would rent a place for and use a driveway with five other tenants, and then overnight, because of Mr. Stein's work, see, the, the body that the state has against him is it doesn't recognize any of the meets and bounds that the town maintains. It was based solely on one person's parole evidence. And that being the customer of the surveyor. Do you expect that to be settled anytime soon on the state level? Well, it's been um, under, um, they just sent us a certified letter saying they would notify us and we could appear. I'll probably be working, but, uh, and then the, the outcome will be public record. Oh, okay. And it's based on his, his uh, conduct up there. His name is Mr. Stein. Yeah. Oh. Yep, from Springfield, Vermont. So, yeah, I haven't received anything from that. They, yep, I don't I, know what their authority is up there. I don't know if they just, you know, how it works. So I guess we'll find out together. Yeah. I'm not involved either. It's just a wit day, you know, a spectator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would just, uh, I guess my recommendation would be just to, um, you know, any information that you do get or receive yep. in regards to that, make sure that um, Therese gets a copy um, and then we can talk about it. Yeah. Or she can point in the right direction to what the next step is. It may take up to a year or so. so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because, you know, it, it would be nice to, you, you pay for something, get a warranty deed, and then boom, overnight, Mr. Stein comes in and says, no, uh, your neighbor says you don't own that. And it's odd because we used it for years as a driveway. And, and uh, you know, we have this meets and bounds survey of Avon Drive, but we also have photos and, and objects that haven't moved, so we have strong evidence. You can't beat it. Yeah, well, we'll see how that works out. And we'll yeah. Take a go from there. Well, thank you. I'm going to head home. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. So I'm like, okay. So he talked to Attorney Fletcher, and then 
emailed me and, and then I called him and he said, oh, you got my email. I'm like, yes, I'm just doing that happy. That's why we're chatting now. And so we went through the whole process and he, so he outlined the, um, the uh, Supreme Court case for me. So we, that's what boost, you know, supersedes the statute. So what he said we could do, however, was um, take every cost that the town of Bethel has incurred. Mm -hmm. So the tax sale, the advertising, my time, um, the electric bill, the insurance, the changing of the um, locks, and all that stuff, everything, including what we would have gained for tax taxes if it had stayed on the rolls. So oh. basically, we need to go through and itemize every single expense that we have, um, that we would have. I don't get that. I know, I didn't either. What about the, uh, he never paid rent up there, because he, you know, he was supposed to pay rent. Was he? I, I don't yeah. know. He didn't have an agreement, you never okay. had a lease. Okay. That I'm aware of, and if he had an agreement with Greg, I don't know that. He well, would it would have been through Greg or, or through Dale. Well, I think it was Greg, or no, uh, it was uh, Keith. No, it was Keith. Keith bought it. Keith bought it. Keith bought it at tax yeah. sale. Well, at that before Greg got here. And then Greg mm -hmm. did try to work with him a, a couple of times. So what's going to happen is we're going to take that money and any we will recoup every single one of our losses plus the tax you know that we would have made. Um, interest and penalties on the I, you know, I think that would probably be a threat. I thought of that. I could use my notes. I'm well, sure he's going to tell me no. But we've also done some legal work, yeah. you know, anything that we've done. So we are going to get back every single cost, including that, and then we will be refunding them out. No, but, yeah. but I did make sense because I, I know people who bought tax sale properties, yeah. flip them, uh -huh. make a lot of money and they don't give it back to the guy that because the, the only time that happens is say say you and uh, you and paul were bidding on a piece of property and whatever it went for over the taxes when he went and they don't redeem that goes that's the, at the day of the sale which is the day of the day that and see and that that's what i said that's exactly was my argument i said wait just a second i said we didn't bid against anybody we bought it for that there was no excess and he said well and like I said, I said, this is what it says in there, this is what the statute says. I said, you point me to the statute because the two that I've read that are in there do not say this. And he was like, it's the 1970 Supreme Court case. I'm like, oh. I mean, I could see if you, you know, if you have a piece of property that, that owes taxes, you go to tax sale, you purchase that property, and then you sell that property. And if you do make something on that, I could see maybe the argument for it. But this person no, squatted no. in this land for no, it was three sale. Years. When the tax sale is over, you, you're still <clears> over. <throat> you're done. Yeah. See, and that's what I said. But this person was, owes ten thousand know, dollars and goes for tax sale for twenty. Mm -hmm. You got to give the owner ten thousand dollars back. Yep. At the end. At that point. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. But then you're done. Yes. Exactly. He's done. But that's it. It's over. And and, and I agree. Here. And I made. Well, this person and I made that agreement. Years, yeah, because it went into what 2013 uh, tax sale. Yeah. And I made that argument, and then he pointed me to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court case, and he said, No. And so I was like, What about savings? Like, I'm telling you about it. Pleasure. And uh, so that's the deal. So, anyways, while I'm extremely sad because that is absolutely not my understanding, that's not the way the statute read, that's the rule. So we will be returning some amount yet to be determined, but I can still count my time and everything that we've put into it since we got it at 2000, I think it was 2014. Returning it to who? Keith, Keith Hodgson. That is That's ridiculous. That makes no sense. Well, it's the law. And apparently it's, well. You get a second well, it's not the law. Well, I mean, it's not the law. And that's the unfortunate part when, when I, you know, is that just a municipality? When a yes. court decides to. It's you. just a municipality because right, we are okay. not in the business. Otherwise, what he's saying is towns would would do that. He said the town. He said it's only because you're a municipality. If you weren't a municipality, if you were, you know, Joe Schmo, you could do that. But because you're a municipality, your recourse or what the statute is or what the 
Supreme Court decided was, otherwise you, we could have a monopoly. We could outbid everybody and then do this. So, but the town bought it. Yes. So he no longer owned it. Ex and that, that was gone. my point. And we have been sitting on it. And well, I mean, does it matter who buys it? Really, at the end of the day, I mean. Apparently, yes. That was apparently what I would, And I would say, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I had no idea. I've never bought a property tax sale. I've always counted select like, words to never do that. And this one was already purchased. Mm -hmm. So when I read what I read in the handbook, I was like, yeah, okay, he <sighs> can do this. No. So. But shouldn't we be able to collect, you know, whatever fair rent would be on I could ask him that like that question. For a period, I mean, that I have. Well, they live there for. It's not right that someone lives there with Scott Free for a time. Why don't you be using money? To come up with to show, yeah. like because we have the however many years of eviction yeah. proceedings that we went through with him, yeah. could that show that he has not been paying rent? And that's that was our legal recourse to. Could be. I don't know. I'm gonna, I will ask. That is a question. I, I sat down after I talked with him and worked my mat off by writing down every single thing I could think of, and then, but then I wrote question mark. But because Keith never entered into any sort of written lease agreement with them. I don't know, so we'll have to find that out. So anyways, you will recoup every single loss plus any tax uh, money that we lost, which is good. So it's not a, you know, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye, as my mother used to say. So well, I guess we're... <laughs> but it doesn't make sense. I didn't the, either. I have the, the same... The, the price yeah. that you sold it for, it was bid, it was bid up, you know, people the whole thing. Why should that person yeah. who doesn't own yeah, property anymore? I know, see, we're all, we're all having the same argument <laughs> myself. I mean, he's arguing about the town could outbid everybody. Right? So what if they do? Yeah. They, if he, if the guy owns 10000 you bid it up to $150,000, get it. Because you want to make money. you got to give that guy hundred forty grand. Yes. So why would you bid it up? You, you, you shouldn't. Yeah, it sucks. Well, and for whatever I'm happens sorry. is it's because the way that works is, is more for the <clears throat> regular, you know, for um, non-municipal, non-municipalities. For them, that's fine, right? Because they obviously can see their value in it and they want to invest their money and, mm -hmm. and um, so for them it works. But for us, this is the rule. I had never, obviously, never heard of that. And um, so obviously grilled them. He's probably going to break. And, uh, but he laid it out for me, and once I understood what he was saying, as much as I begrudged me, I, I thought he made a valid point that he's right. Municipalities aren't in the business to, you know. I said, come on, this is like our only shot at making money. That's non, you know, not really. That's non-tax revenue. He's like, yeah, sorry. These are, these are the rules. Yeah. So, anyway, so that's. To the, uh, even though there was a lease, but he did live there. They live there, so yeah. there ought to be some monetary value of, of them being there. Yeah, I it's a good so. question. So I'm going to, I'll ask, it's on my list of, yeah. you know, I, I, I mean, sat down. I mean, the court case could have been just like, you know, you know, we buy yeah. this person's house, they're out, or let's say they're not even there, you take it over tax sale, and then we sell it, and then they say, okay, well, you're going to have to give money back to, yeah. say, so but this person was there for a long time. They so. were, so we'll see what that works out, but so, I mean, we're obviously going to recoup everything, which is yeah. great. Um, but this is the situation. This is where we're at. So, so going back to Teresa's earlier comments, stay out of the real estate business. That's right. <laughs> right. I have said, <laughs> always, yeah, right. always yeah. said, do not. Yeah. This is why you don't buy. Because yeah. it's, 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 it's we're experience for the board. Yeah. Yeah. Well, me too, because I was, may have had a little steam coming out of my ears when I called him. Like, what are you talking about? And then he. And I read him everything that I had, and this is the statutes, and he's like, I get it, but this is why, this is the, I'm like, no. Um. So, 1970. Any good news, Yes, I do. <laughs> the project is wrapping up. The $2.8 million water project is wrapping up for this year, obviously. Uh, they're going to move to the rec area, so they're going to be um, putting in the conduit, and then I'll have to work it out with GMP, hopefully, this year, but... Um, Something got uh, dropped on um, at, at some point, so I'm not sure. I'm hoping GMP will do it this year. But they're putting in the power for the um, uh, instruments to go to the um, both of the reservoirs so that we don't have to run up there and check how many rungs on the ladder is and that sort of thing. So that's going to be good. Uh, Dietrich was awarded the grant she wrote for the swing sets, so we'll be able to get the swing sets moved. 
um, put in all the bark underneath and get that taken care of. Uh, she also met today with Michael Parker. There was a couple of weird things on the skate park um, uh, of the uh, finishes and he skateboarded on it and he said it didn't bother him as much, but he could feel it, but he knew how BMX bikers would deal with it, so he's definitely gonna get that taken care of. Um, so I thought that was... When you talk to GMP about the, <clears throat> the conduit, can you also ask him about the downtown poles? And I already did. Did. I texted, um, what did. I texted... What date that might happen? Well, I texted Paul and Pearl and he said he would check in. I mean, I've only been there for two again. years now. There'll probably be another five. But. Well, there's some rule about how yes. each one, when we originally went through this, like GMP has X amount of time to get their work done, then they notify the next one. So then maybe that's Comcast. Then they, each one apparently has a, a length of time in between to get to it, but I did And there's ask, nobody enforces those times. It's just no. brutal. I mean, that, the one right here on the corner, like every time there's a large 53 foot trailer that makes this radius, it comes within a hand's reach of hitting that pole every time. Yeah. It's just a matter of time before that thing comes down. So I did have a, so I had texted someone about it to find out they were bringing out powers off that pole now. It's now a communications company. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is, is, um, is waiting for. Yeah, I mean. Uh, but we did, I did send out, email, or I text message him and he was going to try to look into it and find so out. So two weeks um, maybe for our next meeting, can we get a financial update on the water line project? It's kind of, um, it, it may, it's, it's, it's like not going to be until December. Because we have our meeting um, that first Tuesday in December, and then we will because there's a change order that's coming through that we need to see, and then we're going to have a better understanding of where we are. But at this point, um, Alder Chanelia, Tatro, um, totally, we are going to max what the state's going to give us for that galvanized or lead subsidy. We're definitely all obviously that's our goal is to, to get as much in and to get that maxed out. So right now. Um, you know things are going well with the project, and um, we're gonna but we'll have better information for you after that. Cool. After we meet and we see that change order, so um, we have been able to get we had budgeted fifteen thousand dollars for engineering, and using that instead, we've done Avon and Livery. We've had the storm drains like, installed for that price. Mm -hmm. So we um, and we will do the same up here. There's a swale to go on Cushing and. And um, so we still have a couple things we need to button up. Dense more, we need to cut and cap this line. That's something we need to get on sooner rather than later. Obviously, most of the paving that they were doing some patching or uh, trenching today, trench patching today. But pretty soon it'll be quiet in the downtown and it'll be focused on um, over near the rec area. So we've got a nice today driving right through. No, nobody parked, and no, yeah. no big equipment there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then I, rough, but I do I think, think everybody was afraid to park here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they didn't know who was coming through. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, we I was approached by Kathy Day, and I'm going to put her in contact with Dietrich. And it looks like they um, people want to do something in the downtown with with lights for holiday holiday lights, maybe. Um, I know there's some ideas getting thrown around, whether it's all the businesses do holiday lights, maybe some of them with big storefronts do like a, kind of like a, you know, at New York City, how they do the windows and um, for the holidays and try to get maybe even a contest, maybe so people can judge them, trying to bring people to the downtown to shop and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna put Dietrich and Kathy Day together. I think that that would be a good creative team and then, Try to get that done. Have the town, whoever does, normally puts up all the Christmas lights for the town, or, or excuse me, holiday lights. Let's get those up too as well, and try to just bring some light uh, to the downtown. Um, is the goal. I thought that was really nice. Kathy um, had talked to me um, on election day about it, and then I talked to Dietrich, and it sounds like there's some good idea there. Um, the other thing I found out about is for there's some COVID relief, possibly for water sewer users who maybe had, um, here's, I'll have a, I have a meeting tomorrow at one o'clock about it. So I'll be able to find out, I was thinking you, Jesse and Owen, cause your business is closed to see, I don't know if they're going to do, um, if it's only if someone is, is delinquent or if they, or if it's gonna be, if somebody's had a hardship, you know, during COVID, um, how that's gonna work. I don't know the details of the program. I just found out about it on Friday and got signed up and I'm taking the class. 
So um, if we have folks out there, um, you know, depending on how it works, I don't know if they have to be delinquent or just have a hard time, however it's gonna work, we'll find out, we'll get the information out because Dietrich's putting out water bills on, I think, Friday, so we're gonna to try to do an insert with some information that I can learn tomorrow to find out who that's gonna affect, but I thought that was great because that was one of the things that towns were having hard with. We can't subsidize people who were having a hard time during COVID. We didn't have the money to do it. So I'm hoping that there's some um, way to help um, the residents, uh, like the water sewer users directly. So we'll, we'll see what's what. I don't know the details, but I figure any help is, is good help. So. so that's it. That's my good news, bad news. All right. And we had the select board minutes from the 12th, which weren't in our packet last nope. time. And then the 26th, so unless we have any changes to those, I just need a motion to approve both the 12th and the 26th minutes. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then some other <coughs> communications that we had in there was, um, we saw the uh, stagecoach name change. Can I interrupt for a second? So that motion was for both sets of minutes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. The 12th and the 26th. So. And then <clears throat> the uh, stagecoach has changed their name, or has, or is, mm -hmm. in the process of. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so there'll be Tri Valley Transit. And then we had some uh, information in regards to the first meeting for the Equity and Inclusion Committee, which meets on the 19th at 6 o'clock. Uh, did it have a... at the town hall? Okay. Yep. So town hall. The reminder is that the town office will be closed on November 20th because we're having the basement insulated, so we cannot be there. So, mm -hmm. um, oh, on that. yeah. And the other thing we had, you need that? Yeah, I do. So, the other thing is uh, just uh, we'll need a motion to give uh, Therese the authority to sign the easement at the rec area with GMP. In case that comes through before our next board meeting, I can't hold that up any longer. So, surprised they haven't had a huge like that up done in several months before you well, put out the bid. We did all the, we did the paperwork and the deed. We had all that stuff, and then, and I don't know where it's gotten lost in the process. We had their estimate, and I think at first we were kind of told to wait because we were so far out because we had did it very early in the process before. <laughs> I don't even remember. I mean, I just remember doing it really early on, and um, and then Tim came to me today and said, "Hey, guess what?" So I don't know where the ball got dropped, but I know he and I sat down and did all that stuff. So I'm not sure what happened, but anyways, that's where we are now. Because you're right, yes, they, Carol would have loved that. So if that's not the case, so we're dealing with what we're dealing with right now. He's with a check. Yep, exactly. And I said I, she was updating her estimate because she had done it a while ago. Um, so the estimate's getting updated. I said the check's no problem. We'll get that cut. You know, if we have to, um, you know, if it'd be next week or sooner. If we had to, we could. And um, and then the easement, you know, it's boilerplate. And I had we had an easement there from CBPS, so I actually scanned for the deed today along with that easement. Obviously, it only goes to a certain location. But I wanted to have both, so I don't know what happened. I figure if that's the worst thing in all this whole thing, then we're all right. Yeah. Where are they going? Straight up the driveway, straight through. That way, we don't we try not to disturb anything on either side. It doesn't affect the, where the um, skateboard park is, and it won't affect where the ice skating rink or the pool. And that way, too, it's less that we have to clean up later as far as um, reseeding and all that. So, we're going to try to go right up the road the drive of the um, rec area and straight up from that. So we just need a motion to approve Therese to sign on behalf of the easement, the cool. GMP. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. So if we have to, we may 
have to cut that check early. We'll just put it in a separate warning, but or warrant. Um, if we have to, we call Paul. But um, it depends on she doesn't know how fast she's going to get that. So, Are they laying the pipe? We're laying the pipe, and then we have to lay in the primary conduit, and then obviously they'll pull the primary line. So we're moving forward with our piece, and hopefully we're just hoping for the best. Hopefully the weather holds, and good. I know she's been really, really busy. Anything else coming before the board?